hi guys uh, this uh, video is about explaining the meridian passage method uh, or it's also called merp pass method or latitude by meridian altitude method uh, there are different names for it for calculating the observed latitude so you can use the meridian passage method to calculate the observed latitude and my previous videos has discussed this using the sun and the star as a celestial body but i thought i'll make another video uh, with planets as an example of a celestial body so if you have to use uh, the median altitude of the planet to calculate the observed uh, latitude how would you go about doing that all right so this video focuses only on planets uh, as an example uh, let's start with the question here uh, as you know if you don't know already uh, median passage refers to the particular time when uh, the celestial body is exactly on the observer's uh, celestial meridian all right so during a celestial body's transit from rising to setting or east to west there will be a particular time when the observer's celestial meridian and the celestial body will coincide it will be exactly on on your celestial meridian as an observer on the ship that is the time of meridian passage all right uh, so let's start with the question and the question says it's 15th of june 1992 and uh, the dead reckoning position or the estimated position uh, dr position is 45 degrees south and 91 degrees 10 minutes east the sextant meridian altitude of jupiter which is a planet so you can use only four planets for celestial navigation so saturn jupiter venus and mars and jupiter is one of them the meridian altitude was 35 degrees 14.2 minutes index error of the sextant was 0 0.5 minutes on the arc height of i was 9 meters you have to calculate the observed latitude and the position line or pl so the first thing that we can do is find out the time at which the meridian passage of jupiter will occur based on the observer's longitude to do that we go into the nautical almanac for 1992 for the date of 15th of june which is the date given to us in the question so if you go into the nautical almanac you will see that for 15th of june uh, june is here right 1992 uh, the median passage time is for planets are given here this is the median passage time all right i'll just delete this is the median passage time here so you can see that for jupiter the approximate time given is 1702 now you have to remember that uh, these times are local mean times all right so only the time on the side here for is gmt the rest of the times given here are in lmt or local mean time so the sun's median passage is given here this is also local mean time so anyway for this question we are only concerned with the jupiter's median passage time so the local mean time is 1702 so with this time we'll go here we'll write this down at 1702 on 15th of june uh, to get the gmt from the local mean time we'll apply the correction called lit or longitude in time now how do we get longitude in time is by dividing the longitude by 15 so here the dr longitude is 091 degrees 10 minutes and I will divide it by 15 I will get 6 hours 4 minutes and 40 seconds because it's east longitude I will subtract it from my local mean time so when we are in east GMT is least that means GMT is less than the local mean time whenever you are in east longitude GMT is lagging behind you are ahead of GMT if you are in west longitude GMT is ahead of you so you will be adding GM longitude west GMT becomes the best that means GMT is more than LMT so you will subtract the longitude in time correction and you get the approximate GMT time for 15th of June as 10 hours 57 minutes and 20 seconds. Using this time let's find out the declination of the Jupiter. So we'll get the declination for 15th of June at 10 hours. Then we'll find out the D value and find out if it has to be subtracted or added based on the fact that the declination is decreasing or increasing going from 10 to 11. And then this is for the increment speed of 57 minutes and 20 seconds. And finally, once we apply the correction, we will get the declination for 10 hours, 57 minutes and 20 seconds. All right, so let's go into the increments page uh, and find out. So first I will find out the declination. All right, so for declination, we go back into the nautical almanac. You can see for 15th of June and 10 hours at GMT, this is 10 hours on GMT. The declination is 9 degrees 48 minutes north for Jupiter. And you can see that uh, the declination as we are going from 10 to 11, the declination is decreasing from 48 to 47.9 that means we have to apply a d correction of zero we use a d value of 0 0.1 go into the increments page and the d correction value we'll get we'll have to subtract it all right 
So let's go into the increments page for 57 minutes and 20 seconds. So previously these pages were not very well scanned. Now I've uh, corrected this thankfully. So you will see that it's corrected. Yes, that's right. So I've highlighted here it already for you. So you can see that this is for 57 minutes. So don't worry about the 20 seconds second because you don't need the increment. But you can see the V or D correction values are obtained from the same column. So for a D value of 0 0.1, the correction is 0 0.1, which you have to subtract. So we go back into the solutions page and you can see that you will subtract it. And your result, resulting declination for 10 hours, 57 minutes and 20 seconds is 9 degrees, 47.9 minutes north. All right. Then you use your sextant altitude and reduce it to true altitude. So sextant altitude is given to us as 35 degrees 14.2. This is also called the meridian altitude when it's called the meridian passage. Your index that are given to is 0 0.5 on the arc, which you have to subtract. If it's off the arc, you will add it. If it's on the arc, you will subtract it. Once you subtract the index error, you get observed altitude. This observed altitude, then you apply your height of I correction for 9 meters of height of I, which is called dip. Where do you get this value from? I'll show that to you. So you go back into the nautical almanac and go to the page, which is normally the third or the fourth page in your nautical almanac. Now, because this is a digital almanac, I've rearranged the pages for my uh, suitability. But this is normally the third or fourth page. All right, so this is the page that you will be going into for your dip correction or height of I, where your height of I is given in meters and feet. And for a height of I of nine meters, which lies somewhere between 8.8 .8 and 9.2, no interpolation required. You straight away get a correction of minus 5.3. This is the correction you take, and you go back into the solution. So you can see I've used minus 5.3 as the height of I correction. Height of I is always subtracted, so you subtract it from the observed altitude, you get apparent altitude, which is 35 degrees 8.4 minutes. Using this apparent altitude, now you find out the total correction for the planet of Jupiter. Right? How do you do that? So you go back to the same page from where you found out your height of I. Alright, now if I erase the rest of it to make it easier for you, you can now focus that this is the column for planets. It's the same column for stars. All right, the apparent altitude value is given here and the correction value is given here. So for 35 degrees and 9.2 or something, it will be between 33, 43 and 35, 38. The correction will be minus 1.4. Straight away take that correction, go back here and put the correction values minus 1.4. Then you get your true altitude as 35 degrees 7 minutes. Now you can see I've named the true altitude, sorry about that, north. And I've written that it should be named same as bearing. Now what does that mean? That means you have to find out where is the celestial body of Jupiter bearing from you as an observer on the ship. How do you do that? Well, you draw a vertical line. Because we know during meridian passage, the celestial body is exactly on our meridian. We have to plot our latitude and the latitude of the Jupiter and find out where the Jupiter is bearing from us. So you draw a vertical line and you can draw both the observer and the celestial body on the same line because you know they are in the same meridian. And you put a celestial equator here. This is the reference point. This is called equinoctial, denoted by Q. So you can say this is equinoctial or celestial equator. And you draw your latitude. Your latitude or dia latitude is given as 45 degrees south. So you draw your latitude as you would on the Earth's surface and you denote it by Z. This is the zenith. Zenith is you, the observer on the ship. I'll draw a man here just to make it easy. And this is 45 degrees south. You have gone south of the equator. The declination of the uh, Jupiter is 9 degree 47.9 minutes north. So you go north of the equator like you would on the Earth's surface and you denote it by X. This is the planet. And you can see the planet is bearing north from you. Right? So although it's on the meridian, it's bearing north from you. And that's why you name true altitude north because it's supposed to be named same as bearing. Once you get your true altitude, subtract it from 90 and you get your MZD. Also sometimes called MZX or meridional zenith distance all right meridional zenith distance when it comes to median passage questions we call it mzd or mzx otherwise it's called tzx or tzd which stands for true zenith distance so once you subtract it from 90 you get mzd and you name it south why because you have to name it opposite to true altitude so whatever you name as your true altitude you will name opposite to that when you are naming mzd so you named your true altitude north you will name mzd south if it was south you would have named it north all right then you write down your declination below your mzd and then you see that if they are opposite names 
if they are south and north or north and south you will subtract one from the other and you will retain the name of the larger for the latitude retain name of larger what does that mean that means that whatever is larger in this case mzd is larger so you will use that name for the latitude so mzd is south you will use south for latitude because they are opposite names you will subtract the smaller from the bigger it was same names you would have added it but in this case they are opposite name subtract the smaller from the bigger name it south because south is the larger one and you get your observed latitude as 45 degree 5.1 minutes you can see which is very similar to the one that you got in dr latitude but not exactly the same all right because dr latitude is based on estimated positions once you get your observed latitude that is the question done the other thing that it asks you is position line now what you have to remember with meridian passage questions any meridian passage question the position line is always 090 to 270 it is on the orientation of 90 degrees to 270 degrees why is that because uh, like i showed you in the previous example or rather in this example here you know your, you were here and the body is here right so the body is north of you on the same meridian now the body is bearing north of you the bearing line is absolutely vertical because it's a bearing right so the position line is drawn perpendicular to the bearing line always in this case if the vertical line if you draw a perpendicular to the vertical line this line horizontal line is the position line will always be in the orientation of 090 to 270 even if the body was bearing south from you and you were z here and the body is here it would still be the same case the bearing would be perpendicular and a line perpendicular to it would be in the orientation of 090 to 270 degrees that's why whenever you see a meridian passage question don't worry about calculating the position lines as you have to in other questions just write it is in the orientation of east west 090 to 270 all right so hope all this helps uh, just want to let you know that this uh, why we reduce extend altitude to true altitude is because uh, all the altitudes have to be reduced at sea level the one that you obtain uh, sextant altitude is from the ship's bridge that's not at sea level so you have to apply the different corrections such as index error height of eye correction and total correction total correction is nothing but a combination of uh, corrections like parallax and semi diameter and refraction and all that and uh, this is to done to reduce the sextant altitude at the sea level which is the true altitude that is at your rational horizon all right if you have any questions uh, write uh, in the comments and again i thank my subscribers and all those people who watch the videos and they send me comments and then send me feedback and a lot of encouragement i really appreciate it i can't name any one of you there are so many of you but uh, really appreciate it guys thanks and i'll see you soon with my next video